Hello everyone. Well, I've got another cordless vacuum cleaner to look at today. This is a Roid Me cordless vacuum cleaner. I think that's how you pronounce it. Roid as in hemorrhoid. Let's hope that this cordless machine doesn't turn out to be a pain in the bottom. I only bought this because I saw this at a very, very attractive price on Amazon. I'll just check how much I paid for this. This cost me, at the time of buying it, £46.05, brand new, direct from Amazon. The next day, it had gone up to £234.14, and I think today it's about £125 I've not checked recently. Amazon, if you don't know, they change their prices constantly, many times a day. So my advice to you, if you want to buy something on Amazon, just pop it in your Amazon basket and don't buy it. And then check back, now several times a day if you've got time, or at least twice a day, check back and you'll see the price go up and down. When that price has reached a point where you can't resist it, buy it. This one did go down again by another £1.50 before it went right up to uh, 260 odd, whatever it was. So I thought, well, I can't resist trying one of these out for 46 pounds, ridiculously cheap. I like the design of this. It's, it's won several design awards, but I'm not sure if it's gonna be any good, but for 46 pounds and change, it was certainly well worth me getting to show you. Okie dokie, let's have a look. Here, I assume will be the instructions. All sorts of different languages. Uh, I'm not sure where the actual instructions are. But I'm sure they're in here somewhere. Anyway, that's the instructions. And we also get this little cleaning device. So you've got a soft brush here. I think that's helpful for cleaning the central shroud in the dirt bin and we've got another little attachment on the other end with a tiny blade in that'll be for helping to clean hairs etc off the rotating brush roll so i'll put that to one side first thing in this box it says mattress brush so let's get that out it's a tight fit there we go so, I assume, as the name suggests, this is for your mattresses. But, there's no reason why you can't use this on your upholstered furniture as well. It's got uh, a movable base, similar to a Dyson, and a removable brush as well. You can just use a coin to open up the end there and pull the brush out for a thorough clean. And this nozzle is a combination of rubber, I suppose the rubber, rubber blades and quite soft nylon brushes. So there you go, that's your mattress brush. Let's pop that to one side. Next thing, we've got the wand. It looks quite short. It is metal though. Roid me cordless vacuum cleaner, it says on it. So there you go, that's the wand. Underneath, here we have everything else. So let's start with the smallest item nearest to me. That's nice to see. We have here a spare filter. So that's good if you're cleaning the other one or washing the other one. I'm assuming the other filter is washable. I'll have to check. But you have a spare one to put in the machine. Inside here, we've got a very neat looking dock. It's tiny. That wouldn't look very obtrusive on your wall. That, that is a strong magnet. That's a magnetic dock. So if you want to screw that to the wall, you can and then the machine will charge up from this. I'm assuming it will. In fact, possibly not. I think you still have to plug the machine in separately. There's no, 
unless well I'm thinking it was um, a magnetic dock ah there is an opening hang on I'm wondering if we can wire this in would be good if we could ah well that's the part we attach to the wall and then that screws onto it so I think it just holds it on the machine you still have to plug the um, mains adapter in to charge the battery I'm assuming here is the mains adapter this uh, machine I'm sure will be available in other countries such as the US of A so you will get a suitable plug according to the country you buy your cleaner in so there's that here's a cleaning tool well it's quite a nice soft brush you could do your shelving your blinds I'm just seeing if it rotates yes it does it's a bit stiff it rotates I don't want to force it rotates a bit it doesn't seem to go all the way and this is a two-in-one tool so there's a little sticker we need to take off to separate the brush from the crevice tool hang on a minute folks why do they have to put a sticker on there there we go so that does come off for your nooks and crannies so there's that what else have we got this is the main carpet and floor brush similar design to the mattress tool but just bigger it says electric brush on it you can remove this there's a little tab here that you can remove I won't remove the whole thing but that will lift out if you need to give it a thorough clean or check for blockages and of course you can use the little tool supplied if that gets wrapped around with uh, dog hair or human hair etc so I've got uh, quite a large brush little velour strips all around the edge little wheels at the front two little wheels at the back and a flexible neck okay I think it's time to have a look at the cleaner I must say I do like this white design it's very Apple-esque if you like your Apple products this is a sort of Apple style do you think if Apple made a cordless vacuum it might look something like this so we've got uh, the charging port is actually on the back here under a little rubber cover so we plug the, the mains charger into there obviously it needs fully charging before first use it will have a little bit of charging this is the on off button doesn't work let me hold it in you have to hold the button in for a couple of seconds it doesn't just turn on and off you have to hold it to start it but I suppose that's better than having to squeeze a trigger all the time we also have a boost button at the back so you have to turn the machine on first hold it in very acceptable suction power on boost I don't know how long it lasts though on boost it's very swish looking it's it's a matte a matte white and a dove gray very stylish we do have a small indicator here I'm not sure if I'll be able to show you I'll just zoom in now that shows the state of charge and as you can see it isn't fully charged so I will need to charge it up until all the lights illuminate to empty the bin we do have a little grey button at the bottom and then the bin comes off I'm not keen on this type of bin emptying design because you've got to use both hands it's not like the Dyson for example or many other cleaners where you can just press a button and the flap opens at the bottom you've got to take the container out to your bin you've got to remove the filter you've also got to remove the 
in a shroud then you tip the dirt out I don't like that way of emptying but I suppose you get used to it and it's quite a small capacity so this is something you'd have to empty after every use or every second use depending on what you're cleaning up and how big your home is the filter will only go in one way there's a little lip at the top to correspond there's a little handle pops up to help you pull out the central cyclone so that pushes in there and we have please make sure the filter is installed in the right place it says and please remove the electrostatic film of dust cup before the first use so I will remove the electrostatic film so yes quite small I can't see a maximum fill line but normally the rule of thumb is you don't really go beyond the central shroud of a cordless cleaner so basically where my finger is I would say is the max fill line here we have the cleaners a nice little bit of chrome trim adds a bit of classiness I mean I think for 46 pounds a bargain not sure whether I'd pay 240 something for it though um, it might have gone down to 125 the last time I checked but yeah <laughs> If you're lucky enough to get this for under 50 pounds, well, it may be worth going for. I haven't tried it out yet, of course. So that just pops in. So I suppose once you get used to it, it's easy enough to take the container off, empty it out. You can give the container a bit of a rinse out as well. Brush the shroud with the little brush provided. So to show you quickly, I'm gonna to have to leave this on charge before I demonstrate it, but you can connect obviously the mattress tool directly to the machine let's see that in action and I believe we'll be able to connect the larger electric brush so if you're doing stairs the wider head will make uh, short work of stair cleaning Let's uh, see that rotating as well. It's very quiet, I must say. You can hardly hear the uh, brush in use. Press the button to release it. And of course we can use it as a suction only handheld with the crevice tool. There is an optional hose available with this. I'm going to check the box again, but I don't think there's one provided. It does say on the side of the box, flexible hose included, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't have one. You can buy one as an optional extra. The last time I checked, it was about 23 pounds, which is sort of about half of the actual price I paid for the whole machine. So. <laughs> but I might get it because I always find a flexible hose on a handheld machine very handy and useful for getting in the nooks and crannies especially for car cleaning because for cleaning out your car you know it's quite big there's no way you're going to really get under the chairs I suppose you could if you push the, the seats forward as much as you could but adding a flexible hose and then putting the crevice tool on the end does give you a lot more flexibility and of course because this machine stays on when you turn it on you don't have to be pressing down on a button or a trigger like you do with a Dyson you can just put the machine just behind you and guide the hose so I, I expect I will get a hose if this cleaner turns out to be quite good I think I'll fork out for the uh, flexible hose for this machine but this uh, attachment obviously you can't use this on its own and let's just see I don't want to break it it doesn't seem to rotate fully it just rotates that much but uh, to use the dusting tool one does need to attach it to the end of the crevice nozzle and of course finally for floor cleaning and carpet cleaning we attach the wand nice firm positive click which I do like and again there we go so just going to pause and plug this machine in give it its full charge until all the lights illuminate let's see how it fits onto the um, bracket here 
You see, it's not a what it's not one of those. I assumed it was like one of those wireless charging things you get for a phone where it's magnetic. Now, I'm not sure. Mmm, not sure if that would actually hold the weight of the machine. It would just slide off. So I think basically to store this cleaner on the wall, you do have to have it attached to the wand and the main electric brush. So it's taking the weight. And basically, yes, it just stops it from sliding down. But I think you do have to. Yeah, it will, it will stand in the upright position. I'll check the instruction book before coming back to you, how we uh, charge that. But obviously I'm just going to charge this by plugging in the mains charger. So let's do that now. It's a bit of tape or the film actually on the charger. We'll just rip that off before we plug it in. There we go get that off there and we have i'd say approximately one meter of cable plug it into my socket behind me uncover the charging port and then i can pop a charging cable into the cleaner as you're charging the cleaner you'll see the white lights illuminate when the machine is fully charged all the lights will be lit I've just checked the instruction book, which isn't very good, to be honest, and I can confirm that this bracket supplied is just a wall-mounted magnetic bracket. It doesn't charge the machine. You still have to plug the machine in to the charging socket. And also I can confirm that you have to have the machine fully assembled with a main carpet brush attached, and it just leans up against the wall. The weight of the machine is supported on the floor. This will not hold the machine up without the cleaner actually stood against it so it's basically just to hold it against the wall so it doesn't fall down or slide off this brush is used to clean the filter the filter is not washable i thought it would be but i've checked the instructions it's not washable you are supposed to clean it using the brush supplied if you have another vacuum cleaner to hand with a dusting brush attachment you could use that to remove any dust or fibers that have got trapped onto the filter okay folks well i'm going to leave this i can't see how long it's supposed to take in the instruction book but on average a cordless vacuum takes around four hours to charge fully when new so as soon as all the lights have lit up i'll be back and i'll be doing a bit of a demonstration okay well the vacuum cleaner is fully charged and according to the website it takes 150 minutes for a full charge I'm just going to give it a quick go on my plush pile Saxony carpet first on the default setting and then on the boost setting on the default setting it's uh, relatively easy to push picking up some bits not too bad at all okay let's try it on boost I got a little amber light i'm not sure if we can see it there's a little amber light flashing so i think the brush has cut out it doesn't really like this carpet on its boost setting it seems to be okay on the normal setting though but this is a plush pile carpet and i do have trouble with many vacuums on this on a short pile carpet i'm sure this cleaner will function a lot better i'm going to put down a shorter pile rug on top of this carpet and sprinkle some dirt on it and we'll see how effective this vacuum is at cleaning up the dirt on this rug i've sprinkled various types of dirt so i've got some rice rolled oats red lentils and some black aquarium sand so we'll rub the sand in this cleaner should deal fine with surface dirt but whether it's going to pick up the sand that's being rubbed into the pile I'm not sure okay I'm going to start off on the default setting first we'll go forward and back through the middle 
and see how well it does just on the default setting. We might have to boost it to remove the remaining bits of sand. Okay, here goes. Well, as you can see, it's dealt with the surface dirt much as I expected, but there's a lot of the black sand left on this rug and more dirt here in the grooves on this textured rug. So I'm going to try this area once more, but this time using the boost mode. Well, even on boost, it's picked up most of the dirt in the grooves, but there is still plenty of sand and it's only very light, fine sand, but it has left it in the carpet. Now, sand represents grit that you can bring in to your carpets if you wear shoes into the house and it gets trodden into the pile. And as the piles trodden on subsequently, the sharp particles of grit can cut into the fibers that's why it's important to get them out of the carpet but uh, yeah i'm gonna have to go over this rug several times i think to remove all this black aquarium sand Well, I can't say I'm all that impressed with the performance of this Roydme vacuum cleaner. Yes, there was a lot of dirt and it has picked up all the surface dirt, but there's still quite a bit of black sand left in this rug. But to be fair, I have, I have gone over the max fill line. So what I'm gonna do, we'll take off Oh, it spilt some dirt out. I'll take off the dirt bin. We'll empty the dirt. We'll start with an empty dustbin. And then I'll go over the area again on maximum on the boost setting just to see if I can remove the rest of the sand with an empty dirt bin. <laughs> I've been over this rug several times on maximum power and there's still black sand in this rug. I can see it moving about as I go like this. On the surface, the rug looks pretty clean, but when you get close up, it isn't. <laughs> there's a lot of black sand still bouncing about on the rug. So yeah, okay for surface dirt, but for anything that gets into the pile, you're gonna have to go over quite a lot of times 
to attempt to remove it. And still, I'm going to have to go over this even more to remove it. I'll use a mains pad vacuum cleaner to get this rug clean after I've finished the demo. I'm going to measure the suction power of this R10 using my suction gauge. Now, as a point of reference, a pneumatic Henry rated at 620 watts measures around 80 on my gauge. So it'll be interesting to see how much suction this R10 has, both on normal and boost mode. <laughs> On its normal setting, this cleaner measured around 28 on the suction gauge, but on boost, it was 84. So in boost mode, this handheld cleaner does have more suction power than a pneumatic Henry, but of course, when used in boost, it's not gonna last for very long. I'm going to try out the mattress brush now. It says mattress brush on it, but you can of course use this on your upholstered furniture. I suppose you could use it on your stair carpeting as well. Now, a lot of people, according to a recent survey, don't bother vacuuming their mattresses, but it's something I would suggest you do. We spend up to a third of our lives in bed and our mattresses can harbor dust mites, their feces, and of course, your skin flakes that shed during the night. They can just come off as very fine dust. You'll be very surprised if you've never vacuumed your mattress before. If you do it for the first time, the amount of fine, very pale dust that comes out, you'll be quite horrified. Once you've done it once, I think you'll be vacuuming, vacuuming your mattress on a more regular basis. Maybe every time you change your bedding would be a good idea. So I'm gonna try out the mattress brush, but I'm just gonna try and pick up the dirt on the rug. So it connects directly. You can connect it to the end of the wand as well goes that way around, that's it. I do like the positive click you get with these attachments. Okay, I'm gonna start on the normal power. We might get a better result because the suction is concentrated a bit more with a smaller nozzle. Well, that's quite an effective little nozzle. It dealt pretty well with the dirt on the rug. When I boosted it, it seemed to get the majority of it up. There's a few tiny specks of the black sand I can see, but it does certainly work better than the full-size nozzle. So yes, on a mattress, I'm sure that's gonna pull out a lot of nasty dirt. And of course, use it on your upholstered furniture as well. So yeah, that's, that's a nice nozzle. It's nice to use as well. It pivots well. Uh, yeah, that's definitely a plus point for this cleaner. One thing that's a negative, and it's very, very annoying, is the delay when you switch the machine on and off. It doesn't switch on as soon as you press the button, it waits. And then when you press the button to switch it off, it doesn't switch off straight away. It's a small point, but it is, it's already, it's already made me very, very annoyed. I wanna throw this out the window. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sure I'd get used to it, but watch when I turn it on. It's just a very small thing, but I, it is annoying. I'm used to switching on a vacuum and it turns on as soon as you press the button. You're not, th you're not expecting to wait. Saying that though, I do have a SIBO upright that does pause before it starts up, it's a um, slow start motor. That isn't as annoying as this, but I suppose with use, I'd get used to it. Let's uh, give it a bit more of a test. I've got the pile of dirt I emptied out of the bin. 
I'll attach the crevice tool and we'll see what it's like sucking up a pile of dirt in one go just using suction only. <laughs> The R10 didn't do a bad job of picking up that pile of dirt and I finished off using the full-sized electric brush and as you can see you can attach it directly to the machine so it's ideal in this configuration for cleaning stair carpeting. Okay we've seen how it performs on carpets let's see if it does any better on a hard floor. Well the R10 has picked up all the dirt but it did take some time to do it and I'm not keen on the head, it feels quite scrapey along the floor, you can hear the sound it makes, so if your floor is easily scratched maybe this is not the cleaner to go for, but all that's really rubbing against the floor I suppose, are, well this front part actually here, it's got the velour strips around the nozzle but they'll wear away after considerable use. But yeah, it just, I don't like that sound on a hard floor. I've used other cordless cleaners, for example, the Shark machines with a duo clean brush roll, and they don't have that same scraping sound as you're using it. It hasn't gone right up to the edge. I'm gonna to have to get out my crevice tool and do underneath the areas where it can't reach but on the whole you know considering the amount of dirt I've just picked up it's not too bad at all. Well that's about the end of my video on this Roidme R10. Now for what I paid for it under £50 yeah good value but I think it's currently selling for £270 on Roidme's website so I'm not sure I'd pay £270 for this, maybe £200. One disadvantage of this machine, apart from the delay switching on and off, which is annoying, is the fact that the battery is not removable. I think that's a must nowadays with a cordless cleaner. A battery that you can easily take out, which means you can easily replace it once it's near the end of its life, or you can have a swappable battery when you've run out of power, you can pop another battery in. The battery in this particular cleaner is obviously built in. You can probably change it, but most people wouldn't know how to get into this machine, let alone what sort of battery you need for it. So for an average user, once the battery is depleted and no longer holds a charge, then it's game over for this particular vacuum. It's okay. It's 
pretty good performance I suppose considering the amount of dirt I put down on the carpet and on the hard floor but it's it's not ideal it's not the best cleaner I've looked at certainly in the cordless category I do quite like the mattress brush it does seem to be quite good and I think using that on a mattress will reveal a lot of hidden dirt I'm not keen on the emptying of this machine the fact that you have to get your hands dirty by removing the filter first and as we can see that's the state of the filter now there is some fine dust that's got through to that filter you can clearly see there so that will need brushing clean and then you can see the black sand again has passed through the cyclone so you always have to take this out to empty it so do this outside before you tip the contents of the bin into your outside bin but you know it's picked up a lot of dirt we can see some hair that's wrapped around the central shroud so that will need brushing clean as well so all in all the non-removable battery and the fact that it's quite a dirty emptying system is definitely a couple of thumbs down for that if you have any comments or questions about this cordless cleaner please comment below bear in mind by the time you comment I might have actually sold this so I won't be able to do any further demonstrations I can't afford to keep every vacuum cleaner I show you because 99% of the machines I show you on my channel I pay for myself and in order to be able to afford more machines to show you I can't keep every single one I do have to sell some on get some money back so I can put it towards another machine to feature on my channel so please bear that in mind when you ask me to do videos of various machines because I can't afford to show you every single machine and I don't take very many freebies at all I prefer to buy the machines myself so I can be a hundred percent honest with you about what I think so what I think about this for 50 pounds what I paid for it under 50 pounds yeah quite happy with it for that price I like the looks of it the build quality actually feels pretty good certainly better than a Vax blade would I consider it for 270 pounds possibly not but maybe if you've got mainly hard floors and a few lightweight rugs possibly but there are better machines out there for your money Thanks for watching and I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Bye for now.